Local governments working together internationally through organizations like ICLE are really learning from one another and taking together action that, particularly in a nation like the United States, is not being taken at the federal level. Uh, and we have taken lessons from other places across the world. In fact, Freiburg, Germany is a place we took a lesson. Our city was the first in the United States to adopt a solar feed-in tariff to encourage development of solar energy. And our solar energy has exploded. We have now more than 12 megawatts of solar in a city of only 130,000. And that actually puts us ahead of the state of California on a per capita basis, which is, of course, a leader in the United States, but dramatically behind places like Germany that have made a decision to move toward renewables. And so this type of international learning, uh, we've heard from officials in places uh, in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in Australia and elsewhere. Uh, and we have lessons to share ourselves. I mean, we certainly have uh, rich resources in the United States and we certainly have uh, opportunity. We just have been lacking the political leadership that we need at the national level, which is why so many local officials, uh, including more than a thousand mayors through the U.S. Conference of Mayors and more than uh, 500 cities and counties, the more regional governments in the U.S. have joined ICLE and have adopted plans not just to in invest in uh, environmental improvements, but also we have improvements in, for example, health outcomes. Uh, our community has a program for lower income people to have health insurance and to get the basic care that they need long before the federal government took that action. And these are the kinds of uh, things that we learn as local governments from one another. We are uh, on the ground and we have very close contact with our uh, citizens, uh, going to the grocery store, taking our children to school, walking in the park and so on. It's different than in Washington where they're more isolated and they don't hear people's individual concerns about social equity, about having jobs for themselves and for their children and into the future, and to have clean air and water. We None of us can live here on earth without clean air and water and that is fundamentally very important to people across the world including in the United States. Well, fundamentally, if we continue to move in the direction we've been moving for the last 100 years, we will deplete the resources that have fueled that uh, industrial revolution. We are even in Saudi Arabia, they are moving toward renewable energy because they realize that they have peaked their oil production and they realize that we are running out of these sources and to bring oil, coal, natural gas up out of the ground, out of geologic deposits and put those pollutants into the atmosphere unbalances our earth and creates contaminants both in our air and water that are uh, changing the way our earth functions. And ultimately we can't continue that. Even, even in a population of 7 billion as we move toward 9 billion, 10 billion, we can't continue to act in this way. But we can make changes and as I always say in the U.S. we have a bit of a can-do attitude. Uh, to me when someone says, oh it's a problem too big for us, we can't afford to address it, we can't do this, we can't do that, I say that's anti-American to me. We are a technological company, we have incredible resources, we have a fantastic system of science and engineering and, and great universities that people come from all over the world and this is a problem too big for us and yet we hear from countries in Africa that they're addressing the problem, it's, you know, stunning. It's anti-American to say we can't solve these problems, right? Uh, so that's the kind of thing that American uh, cities and counties are having to say when we don't get that action out of Washington, we, when we see people sitting on their hands because their hands have taken a lot of money from those industries that are making so much. But, you know, there's a solution in it that I think that we can uh, continue to have a healthy economy. We can continue to enjoy a high quality of life. Uh, it might be using different products and services than we've been used to, but not lesser products and services than we've been used to.